Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome to some distance learning. Um, we're going to start something new. Do the best you can with this and just understand this is what we have right now. This is where we're at. So I get it. I know it might be a struggle, but you'll get used to it. Just watch the videos. Learn that if th something goes too fast, pause it, rewind, go back, um, copy stuff in your notes that you need, and then just kind of work forward. Today we're going to kind of go over all the stuff that we already talked about with transformations and then you guys will have a couple questions that you can try on your own. Um, you're going to find on the Google Classroom blank copies of your notes um, if you want to print those out again or if you have the purple packet everything you need is going to be inside the purple packet. The yellow one is going to be what we do next in circles but we're going to start with the purple one. If you open up to page 39 there's a rule sheet you'll see we have line reflections, point reflections, and rotations. Underneath that it says translations and dilations. That comes up later this week. Today we're just going to go over all these rules again so if you need to pause here and kind of copy this down you can. Other than that we're just going to keep on moving forward into the next page. Page 40 talks about reflections in the x-axis. And remember, you can always just draw the picture. So question number one gives you point A, which is 2, 3, right 2, up 3, here's point A. And if we're going to reflect across the x-axis, that means the x-axis acts as our mirror, and we can count down to the x-axis across the other side, and that would put point A here. You can draw that, that would be the point 2, negative 3, or simply with reflections across the x-axis, we're going to keep the x value the same, but we negate the y value. So 2, 3 turns into 2, negative 3. Negative 3, 2 turns into negative 3, negative 2 for number 2. So really what happens is the sign of the second value changes. The sign of the first value stays the same. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys try number 3. You can use the graph paper if it makes it easier, or just follow the rule, see what you get. Questions 4 through 6 are the same idea but instead the y-axis becomes our mirror. So now point A right here in the first quadrant would go over to the y-axis out the other side into quadrant two. By rule, the point four, five would become negative four, five because we keep the y value, the second number, but we negate the first value. Now, just be careful, negate doesn't mean always make negative. If the point was negative two, six and it was a negative first number already, that becomes positive two, six, we change the sign. So negative 2, 6 turns to positive 2, 6. Go ahead and try number 6, see what you guys come up with. 7, 8, 9, we're going to do reflection through the origin. So now remember, and these points can start anywhere. What's going to happen is it's going to go down through the origin and come out the other side. So anything up here in quadrant 2 will end up down here in quadrant 4. Anything in quadrant 1 would end up in quadrant 3. <clears throat> and you could count boxes almost like doing slope. How would you get from A down to the origin? You'd go down and over. And what we'd want to do is go over and down the other side to get the same distance away from the origin. Or, by rule, we negate both the X and the Y values. Um, <clears throat> I saw some of the work that people are sending me pictures of. Reflections through the origin and reflections through the line Y equals X. Those are the two most people get wrong. They kind of mix them up. Origin, you're going to negate both of them. And you're going to do negative 2, 5 turns into 2, negative 5, see how both their signs change. Negative 5, 4 turns into 5, negative 4. So what would happen to the point negative 3, 2 at number 9? Reflection across the line y equals x. That's one where you have to imagine your paper could be folded along the diagonal. So everything on the top left-hand side of your paper comes down here to the bottom right-hand side. So a point like A would go down to the mirror, which is on an angle. So it means you have to travel at an angle, and it comes out the other side. Now, we already know that <clears throat> perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slope. And because the line y equals x has a slope of 1, it goes up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. We know that these points are going to be perpendicular to the mirror and come out the other side the same distance. We can really count along the diagonals or down and over. You could see that point A is one diagonal away from the line. So A prime would be one diagonal to the right of it. B is one two, three, and a half. We'd have to go half, one, two, three. That would put me right here for B prime. <clears throat> I think with this one, it's easier to just remember the rules. I think of it as the line Y equals X. It's telling me right in the question that Y is equal to X. So I'm going to put the Y in the X spot and then put the X in the Y spot. So three, five turns into five, three. 
If I find 11, I change it to a B just so I can put it on the paper. If it was negative 2, 5, I make it 5, negative 2. So try 12, see what you do there or what you come up with. Something new that we haven't talked about yet, let's just extend it. If I give you the line y equals negative x instead of y equals x, instead of having a slope of positive 1 up this way, I'm still going to start at the origin, but I go down one, right one, down one, right one. And all that does is give me a different mirror. This one, you might want to count boxes as well along the diagonal. You could see that B would come up here and out the other side. P comes from here and down the other side. But the rule is a little bit easier. If we were to do this one, we kind of developed the rule ourselves. We see the point negative 5, 7 right there would turn out to be negative 7, positive 5. And the point negative 6, negative 5, if we counted boxes, would bring me to positive 5, positive 6. So what's really happening from negative 6, negative 5 to 5, 6? What's happening from negative 5, 7 to negative 7, 5? Notice the pattern here. The signs are changing. The negative numbers are turning positive. Positive numbers are turning negative, And they're switching places. So that's the rule that you'll see in your notes later on. If you're reflecting across the line y equals negative x, you're going to switch and negate both the x and y values. They're going to change places, and they're going to change signs. Remember the last thing we did before the shutdown? We talked about reflections across different lines. So the key for this, if you're going to reflect across the line x equals 1, you want to draw the line x equals 1. I drew that as my dotted line here. Plot your original point. A is negative 2, 5. So I went left 2, up 5. Now because my line x equals 1, I have my vertical line right there. I'm going to travel along the horizontal. Kind of have it drawn in there. So A prime is going to be somewhere on this line. But where on the line? It depends on how far A is from my mirror, which is not the y-axis this time. It's the dotted line. So A is three units from the dotted line. I want to travel three more units to the right. That puts me right here. And probably the hardest part now is when I find this, make sure I'm not counting from the dotted line. From the origin, how do I get to this point right here? I'd have to go right 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the point 4, 5. So A prime B, 4, 5. There's really no rule for this one. I just think it's easier to draw the picture. If I want to go across the line Y equals 5, I go up 5 on the Y axis. I draw my line. It just so happens to be the same horizontal from part 1 or number 15. B is the point 2, 7, right 2, up 7. You can notice this is two boxes above the mirror. This is my mirror this time. So I'm going to move two boxes below it. That brings me right here. This is the point right two, up three. So B prime would be two comma three. And again, I changed it to B and B prime because I already used A for question 15. These are much easier if you have your own piece of graph paper. So if questions earlier, if you go back to the first page reflecting across the X axis and Y axis, if you don't use the graph paper, Use that graph paper here. I think that makes it a lot easier. We're going to skip 17 and 18 for now. That comes later this week. Rotations, 19, 20, 21. Again, I just think it's best if you guys take this one. Think of the top, the y-axis, where you draw the letter y up here. And remember that if you have a positive rotation, it means you're going to turn your paper to the left. We talked about leaving the classroom in math, how that was a positive thing. And our door to leave the classroom is to the left. So we turn the top of our paper to the left for a 90 degree rotation. We turn it a quarter turn. So this arrow would be facing here. If it was 180 degrees, we'd go right half a turn. So it's upside down. 270 degrees would bring me over to here. Notice it'd be quicker if I just went this way for 270. But that's really turning to the right. And it's a quarter turn. That'd be a negative 90 degree. If it's negative, we go to the right. So what happens to the point 3, 4? It becomes negative 4, 3. What about point B, 5, 6? It becomes negative 6, 5. And again, I really just think you should try these ones. Turn your paper and see if you can find where they are. 180 degrees, when you turn it upside down, you'll notice this one goes from negative 2, positive 1, to positive 2, negative 1. That should look familiar. There's a rule for that it matches up with that we already know. We'll, we'll kind of put those together later on. Translations are going to be tomorrow's lesson, so don't worry too much about that yet. You'll see a new video. Dilations, we're going to do dilations on Wednesday. Some more translations. And the questions that you kind of remember how to do, 
<clears throat> for number 30, we have the points. Draw your original, label them. I even shaded in to make it easier to see. Here's my original triangle. Then we're going to find A prime, B prime, C prime after reflecting across the X axis. So that means when I reflect across the X axis, all my X's are going to stay the same. The 2, 0, 2 stay the same. But my Y's get negated. This would be negative 3, negative 6, negative 6. And it goes right here. And then for part C, I now have two triangles. You have to read the question to find out which one we're going to use. It says the image of A prime, B prime, C prime. So we're going to use the ones we just came up with. And we're going to reflect it in the line Y equals X, which tells me switch their places. That would put those points here. So see if you can't fill these in. I'll have the answers on mine later on for you. Fill these in and see what values you get. And then you can always look back if you need to. What I'm going to ask you to do, try numbers 3, 6, 9, 12, fill in the points for number 30, and then 31, just try A, B, C. Don't do part D yet. That's something that's coming up later on. So <clears throat> just kind of review all of your rules for transformations that we know. We know reflections. We know rotations. So just kind of catch up to speed with those. You did that last week, and then tomorrow we'll start with a new lesson. Wednesday, you'll have a homework assessment. Friday, you'll have a quiz, okay? So keep the messages coming. Send me emails if you have anything you don't get, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, good job.